Welcome to this webinar on routing to the chip edge, in which we will introduce more advanced routing algorithms for Lucida EPCIS. In earlier webinars, you have been introduced to connectors, which is the straightforward way to connect things in EPCIS, where basically you say what is connected to what, how. For instance, in this splitter tree, SP00 R1 is connected to SP10 using a Bezier S-Band. There are plenty of connectors that are available to you in IPCIS, such as Wild Manhattan and others. An overview can be found here. But when it comes to routing to the cheap edge, things get a bit more complicated. As you can see, depending on where you are in this bundle, your routing strategy is different. Here you rot rotate to the left and have waypoints that decrease. Here you have an S-band at the end, while you have a Manhattan first, and then here you rotate to the right. So what we really need here is a routing heuristic, it's a, which is a general ID in how you want to route all your input ports to all your output ports in a portable, customizable way that survives changes to your device under test when you adapt it. IPKIS is a great platform to do that. And we have several tools at your disposal to be able to achieve this, which is combined connectors and bundles. Combined connectors are very simple. It is a way to put together different individual connectors and still create a new one. For instance, imagine you have these two grating couplers that you want to use an S-band and a Manhattan connector for, with an intermediary point at 100-100, you can do so using a combined connectors classification. So, first section you have an S-band all the way up to 100-100 and then you have a Manhattan section. This can be then put into the circuit cell just as any other connector. Also, properties of the individual connectors can be passed on, such as the best radius will apply to all the individual components. If you want to change the properties of an individual connector in a combined connector, you can do so using partials. In this example, we had a control point 150, 150 to this Manhattan section, which is the second section of this combined connector. to explore these two examples in the CDI Academy, Combined Connector 1, Combined Connector 2. The next thing I want to explore with you are waveguide bundles. Waveguide bundles are pretty simple conceptually. You have a set of input ports that are fanned to a centralized bundle, and once they arrive at their destination, more or less, they fan out again to their destination output ports. This is fairly easy to do in IPCIS using conditional waypoints and conditional connectors, where we use the relative positioning of the waypoints to their individual input and output points as to determine what to do. So in this case, we move the waypoints to the top left and top right and bottom right, depending on whether uh, uh, you are above this bus height or below. Also, uh, the fact that you have S-bands when you're really close in the Y direction is accounted for here using conditional connectors. You see if the difference between the waypoint Y, which is the height of the bus, and the position of the grating is less than two times the band radius, which we need here, then we use an S-band. And this approach heuristically codes in what you want to do, which will then survive changes to your positioning of your grating couplers, the positioning of the bus, the separation of the grating couplers, the separation of your waveguides. So it's a very robust approach that once that you encoded it will uh, be reused over and over. There are more complete examples available as well. For instance, a splitter tree routed to the north. Here we have the same thing, a bus of waveguides that then fans out using Manhattan's and S-bands. Let's dig into the actual code on Lucida Academy to see how it works. So if I run this code, 
a class called rod splitter tree north will be called six times for a, va a varied number of levels in a splitter tree. and print it to GDS. Here we go. So here we have a simple one zero level splitter tree with just one component that's routed to the north. Two, three, four, five, five and six. Similarly we can explore the GDSs of this actual routing, where you see that the waveguides are neatly spaced, S bands are used when a full Manhattan is not possible. Now imagine that you want to change something to your design. Let's say you want to change the waveguide spacing, which is incidentally a parameter of our router splitter tree, and the band radius that you might want to have tighter. Also, we, we will change something about the device under test, let's say the spacing of the waveguides, the spacing of the MMIs. Here we go. So if we rerun this, we can reapply the routing heuristic that has been encoded into IPGIS and have a new design, saving us a ton of work. Here we go. So here again we can see the result. The spacing indeed has increased and the routing heuristic has been reapplied successfully. When we open the GDS, we see that the routing is indeed providing a very tight packed a waveguide bundle with spacings that are now 3 micron instead of 5 and also the band radii have been adapted. Finally, we also have an example where we route to the west, and it's very similar as the earlier example. I thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and will stay with us for the others.